revving up the future of aerial combat, an $800 million ultrasonic fighter jet engine is now battle ready. This technological marvel, equipped with the most advanced features and lethal capabilities, boasts unprecedented speed and power, setting a new benchmark in military aviation, taking the world by surprise and aroused interest across several nations. What are the capabilities of this newly developed jet? Has the U.S. finally cracked the code of hypersonic weapons? Join us as we delve into the future of military aviation. The United States 800 million ultrasonic fighter jet engine that is ready for battle. The need for unrivaled speed is one of the major reasons behind the Department of Defense's continuous investment of substantial amounts into the creation of hypersonic weapons. These weapons are unique due to their ability to move extremely fast and change direction, which could help the U.S. hit well-protected targets from far away. To achieve the aim of developing hypersonic air fighters, the United States began the X-15 hypersonic research program. In the X-15 hypersonic research program, NASA has closely worked with the U.S. Air Force, Navy, and North American Aviation, Inc. Over nearly 10 years, the aircraft flew and set world records for speed, a mind-blowing speed of Mach 6.7 and an altitude of 352,200 feet. One of the main aims of this program is to study all parts of piloted hypersonic flight and the valuable information from the X-15 program helped develop the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo spaceflight programs, as well as the Space Shuttle program. Also, the North American Aviation Inc. C has built three rocket-powered X-15 aircraft that flew 199 times in total. Scott Crossfield, a pilot from North American and the former NACA, made the first unpowered glide flight on June 8, 1959. NASA's William H. Dana flew the final flight on October 24, 1968. All these flights happened in the high range area near Edwards Air Force Base, California, and NASA's Flight Research Center. Twelve pilots participated in the program, five from NASA, five from the Air Force, one from the Navy, and one from North American. Pilots used two main flight plans, a speed profile, where they maintained a level altitude until descending, and a high altitude plan, where they climbed steeply to a high altitude before descending. Due to its rocket engine's high fuel use, the X-15 was launched from a B-52 aircraft at around 45,000 feet and speeds over 500 miles per hour. The rocket engine powered the flight for the first 80 to 120 seconds, depending on the mission. The rest of the 8 to 12 minute flight was unpowered, ending with a glide landing at 200 miles per hour. Following earlier X-planes that tested speeds from just below Mach 1 to Mach 3.2, in 1952, NACA began researching spaceflight and related challenges. By 1954, NACA's Research Airplane Projects Panel identified the need for a new plane to study hypersonic and spaceflight. NASA outlined the X-15's features and presented them to the Air Force and Navy in July 1954. Just five months later, the three parties agreed to work together on the project, and in September 1954, the Air Force chose North American to build three X-15 aircraft. A North American team, led by Chief Project Engineer Charles Feltz, designed the X-15 with technical help from NACA's Langley Aeronautical Laboratory, now known as NASA's Langley Research Center in Virginia and the High Speed Flight Station, now known as the NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center in California. The basic X-15 was a single-seat mid-wing plane designed to study high-speed flight issues like aerodynamic heating, stability and control, and physiological effects above Mach 5. Although the second X-15 aircraft was later modified, it started with two XLR-11 engines from Reaction Motors Division of Theoco Chemical Corp, providing approximately 16,000 pounds of thrust. When the XLR-99 engine became available, the thrust increased to 57,000 pounds. The X-15 used conventional controls for flying in dense air. Rudders on the vertical stabilizers controlled yaw, a left or right nose movement, while angled horizontal surfaces on the tail controlled pitch when moved together and roll when moved separately. For flying in the thin air outside Earth's atmosphere, the X-15 used a reaction control system. Small hydrogen peroxide rockets on the aircraft's nose controlled pitch and yaw, while rockets on the wings controlled roll. The outer skin of the X-15 was made from a nickel-chrome alloy called Inconel X, designed to handle the intense heat from high-speed flight. The cabin, made of aluminium, 
was kept cool by being separated from the hot outer structure. The first X-15 arrived at NASA's high-speed flight station in early 1959, and Scott Crossfield, who helped design the aircraft, began demonstration flights. During the research program, the X-15 set unofficial world records. It reached a speed of 4,520 miles per hour, which is about Mach 6.7 on October 3, 1967, with Air Force pilot Pete Knight and an altitude of 352,200 feet on August 20, 1963, with NASA pilot Joseph Walker. More important than the records were the X-15 studies on hypersonic aerodynamic performance, heating rates, structural behavior under high heat and flight loads, stability and control during atmospheric exit and re-entry, and pilot performance and physiology. Throughout its research flights, X-15 pilots and instruments provided data for over 765 research reports. As Dryden Chief Scientist Ken Illiff and aerospace research engineer Mary Schaefer noted, the X-15 delivered key hypersonic data on aircraft performance, stability and control, materials, shock interaction, turbulent boundary layers, skin friction, reaction control jets, aerodynamic heating, and heat transfer. John Becker, a prominent researcher from Langley and an early supporter of the X-15 program, highlighted teeny five key achievements from the effort. These included the first use of hypersonic theory and wind tunnel data on a real flight vehicle, the first use of reaction controls for maneuvering in space, and the first reusable super alloy structure to handle the heat of hypersonic reentry. The program also developed a nose flow direction sensor for extreme conditions, the first practical full pressure suit for pilots, and inertial flight data systems that worked in both high pressure and space. It was discovered that hypersonic boundary layer flow is turbulent rather than laminar, and that turbulent heating rates are lower than predicted. The program provided the first direct measurements of hypersonic aircraft skin friction, finding it lower than expected, and identified hotspots caused by surface irregularities. Methods were developed to better correlate wind tunnel data with real-world results, improving design criteria for future air and spacecraft. The X-15 demonstrated a pilot's ability to control a rocket-powered vehicle through atmospheric exit, successfully transitioning between aerodynamic and reaction controls. Energy management techniques were first applied to position reusable launch vehicles after re-entry. Additionally, the three X-15 aircraft served as test platforms for a variety of experimental packages. Except for the modified X-15 A2, the X-15s were about 50 feet long with a 22-foot wingspan. The vertical tail was 13 feet tall and had a wedge shape. A part of the lower vertical tail was removed before landing and caught by a parachute because it extended below the landing gear. The plane used a Theocal XLR-99 rocket engine that ran on anhydrous ammonia and liquid oxygen. This engine could produce between 28,000 and 57,000 pounds of thrust. Also, the plane weighed approximately 35,000 pounds at launch and 12,000 pounds when it ran out of fuel. One the other hand, the X-15 A2, which is an updated version of the second X-15 and delivered to NASA in February 1964, featured a 28-inch extension to hold liquid hydrogen for a ramjet engine that was never tested. It also had external tanks for liquid ammonia and liquid oxygen, which provided about 60 extra seconds of engine power and were used during a Mach 6.7 flight. These tanks helped with speed, but also made the aircraft heavier, reaching nearly 57,000 pounds and increased drag. The X-15 program has paved the way for the development of hypersonic weapons and aircraft shifting the boundaries of aerial engineering. However, that's not all. There is other exciting news from Atlanta, Georgia, on the creation of a hypersonic technological marvel that would take the world by storm. While other countries across the world have struggled to develop hypersonic aircraft, the United States has led the way in technological advancements. The U.S. has made significant progress with the help of a startup from Atlanta, Georgia, called Hermius, and the collaboration has resulted in the creation of a technological marvel the quarter horse. Before we delve into the fascinating details of this quarter horse, let's check out what the company that developed it is all about. Hermius is a company focused on aerospace and defense technology, aiming to speed up air travel with hypersonic aircraft. They plan to develop these aircraft quickly and affordably by combining hands-on development with modern computing and automation. 
This method has already been proven with their first turbojet ramjet engine and is now being applied to their first flight program, Quarter Horse. Hermes is also working on Dark Horse, a pilotless hypersonic aircraft designed to offer special advantages in combat. This company has unveiled its first plane, the Quarter Horse MK-1, which will start flying later this year. It was designed, built, and put together in just seven months. This is the company's second fully completed aircraft in the past year, after the Quarter Horse Mix Zero finished its test flights in November 2023. The company aims to make a new aircraft every year at this fast pace. This newly developed aircraft is unlike any other fighter jet that has been created, and according to the United States, it is a military breakthrough. This next-generation fighter jet boasts hypersonic speed, and it is common knowledge in the aviation industry that with more speed comes power, which makes such a weapon a force to be reckoned with on the battleground. In January 2023, Hermos finished the first step in making the hypersonic quarter horse. They performed many tests that started late in 2023. These tests stand to check the quarter horse's performance on the ground by making use of a special rig called Dynamic Ironbird. This rig works by checking if all the parts work well together. This step in making the aircraft just tests how it works on the ground. The developers also made use of something called the Quarter Horse MKO for the other tests performed on this hypersonic aircraft. It had only the most important parts needed for testing. Despite being cheap, it was still good enough to test everything. These tests were performed at the Air Force's place in Tennessee called the Arnold Engineering Development Complex. Hermus chose this place so that they could work directly with the Air Force. The Air Force has been a strong force that has supported Hermes's growth over the years. In August 2021, the company received a $1.5 million contract from the Air Force to develop their proposed aircraft as a possible Air Force One that transports the U.S. President in the future. In August 2021, a jointly funded Air Force contract made sure that Hermus received another $60 million in funding. The Quarter Horse Mimic 1 is a pilotless aircraft powered by a GE J85 engine. Its main goal is to show that it can take off and land at high speeds, which is crucial for future hypersonic planes. Flight tests will be conducted at Edwards Air Force Base. This milestone marks the shift from the design and construction phase to the testing phase for Mako. Over the next few months, the aircraft will undergo various tests on its systems, ground station, operations, and human factors to get ready for flight tests later this year. Don Catterbeck, Hermes Vice President of Test, revealed that moving into the integrated test program is the result of a tremendous team effort and a big moment for the company. As they start preparing for the first flight, they plan to thoroughly assess the aircraft's performance and review the testing procedures, safety practices, and team collaboration. He also expressed his excitement to conduct these tests at the famous Edwards Air Force Base. Each aircraft in the Quarter Horse program becomes more advanced using what was learned from previous models. This method helps reduce risks and speeds up the delivery of products and services to Hermes customers. Hermes CEO and co-founder AJ Piplica mentioned that their approach to developing hypersonic aircraft is unique and crucial because they design, build, and test a new aircraft in less than a year every year. This fast pace hasn't been seen in the aircraft industry for 50 years. It's worked well for improving rockets, satellites, and small drones, and now they are now applying that speed to aircraft. This fast iteration is essential for overcoming the challenges of making hypersonic aircraft operational. Hermes also revealed plans for the next model, the Quarter Horse Mach 2, which will use the Pratt & Whitney F-100 engine and fly at supersonic speeds next year. Josh Goodman, the senior director of the F-100 program at Pratt & Whitney, mentioned that for over 50 years, the F-100 engine has powered the F-15 and F-16 with top-notch reliability. And now it's entering a new phase in aviation. Pratt & Whitney has a strong history of making advanced engines. From the J-58 in the SR-71 to the F-119 in the F-22 and the F-135 in the F-35. They are excited to continue this tradition as we work with Hermes. It will be amazing to see a new aircraft flying with the F-100 at supersonic speeds. Hermes' choice to use this engine for Quarter Horse Minac 2 speeds up the company's plan to develop Dark Horse, a hypersonic aircraft for defense and security missions, while also providing a unique intermediate product, the world's only purpose-built high-speed drone. 
Hermiusco and co-founder Skylar Schuford revealed that the upgrade is a big win for getting a high-performance aircraft to customers faster and shows the benefits of our quick and iterative approach. By moving away from long, rigid development schedules, we can build the right aircraft for now and have it flying in less than a year. MK2 will be our third aircraft built in under a year. Although we still need to prove its performance in flight, closely following this build helps reduce a lot of the program's risk. In addition to this new innovation, the aviation industry in Atlanta revealed a long-term contract on November 13th. Although some information concerning the terms of the contract was not revealed, such as how many years the contract covers, it was only mentioned that the company was getting $23 million for the first year. It was also stated that this multi-year deal will allow them to keep improving their technology and developing aircraft. The contract will focus on showing how well their technology works for hypersonic aircraft in real situations. They will also work on important things like engines, keeping the fighter jet stealthy, generating power, and making sure the aircraft can perform its job effectively. The contract is part of a program called HiCat, run by the DIU. This program aims to use commercial technology to help the Defense Department test hypersonic flights more often. Also, the Pentagon is working on over 70 different projects to develop weapons and fighter jets that can go really fast, faster than Mach 5. But unfortunately, there aren't enough tools and resources to test them all. This means they can't do as many tests as they'd like to check how well these systems work. Before this, the DIU gave contracts to companies like Hypersonic from Australia and Rocket Lab and Phoenix Space from California for the HiCat program. Hypersonics is expected to test their Dart AE platform next summer, while Rocket Lab's Haste vehicle will help with suborbital launches. GE Aerospace will also develop a test bed that's cheaper to launch from aircraft. Barry Kirkendell, the technical director of DIU's space portfolio, said in a statement on November 13th that these current and future commercial capabilities offer the Defense Department cost-effective ways to do tests more often using the best technology available now and in the future. Hermius plans for the Quarter Horse to have its first flight this year. Partnering with DIU and other defense agencies gives opportunities to test their technology and validate their ideas. This not only helps them improve Quarter Horse and Chimera, but also supports their work on the Dark Horse. Hermus CEO AJ Piplica mentioned in a statement that they were excited to use Quarter Horse for high-speed flight tests and to use what they have learned to improve the Dark Horse. He also stated that the contract is an important part of the plan they have to develop hypersonic aircraft in the future. DIU is planning a second part of the program called HiCat 2. They want to work with companies to add different things to the test vehicles, like special equipment for navigation and communication, new manufacturing methods, and cheaper materials. They have also teamed up with a company called nx -Track in California to help with guidance, navigation, and control for HiCat 2. It's important to note that the United States is not the only country venturing into the production of hypersonic weapons. Russia and China have also developed advanced hypersonic missiles. Russia's Kinzhal, or Dagger, is a fast missile launched from aircraft like MiG-31 and 222 bombers. It can also reach mind-blowing speeds up to Mach 10 and has been in service since December 2017. Russia's newer Zircon missile, operational since March 2022, is even more advanced, reaching speeds up to Mach 9 and causing significant damage with its warhead. China also has the Dongfeng-17, which carries a hypersonic glider called DFZF. It can travel up to 2,000 kilometers at speeds of Mach 5 and is difficult for defense systems to intercept due to its maneuverability. It may be equipped with both conventional and nuclear warheads. In addition to the formidable Dongfeng-17, China has the YJ-83 anti-ship missile, which has versions for air and sea launch and features guidance systems that use radar and infrared. The YJ-83K and YJ-83KH variants offer improved range and targeting capabilities. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.